Thanks, Bianca. How are you? Good, thanks. Lovely to be here. Good to have you here. All right, so you teach yoga, meditation, and you practice homeopathic medicine. Tell us a bit more about yourself. Yes, so I've been teaching yoga gee, in Adelaide for about 20 years now, and meditation as well, and homeopathic medicine probably the last decade that's become more and more popular recently because of the desire for people to treat themselves naturally and with um, alternative medicine. Um, and I've seen a growing interest, you know, particularly recently with yeah. homeopathic medicine. So, yeah, I've been on the journey for quite some time um, and seen a lot of change even within the industry, particularly within yoga in the last couple of decades. Yeah. And it's now, it's so accepted and normal. I remember when I started teaching, or even when I started practicing yoga, it was unusual to have a yoga mat. It was hard to get one. Mm. And from if for those of you who practice yoga, you can sometimes use blocks as a prop and the nice foam softy ones now, but back when I learnt, we were all using wooden blocks and it's just really hardcore. Yeah, it's changed so much, <laughs> yeah, hasn't it? It has, it has. But the, the, what's remarkable about it is it adapts over time. So it, a, a practice and a, especially a spiritual practice, it has to stand the test of time because there's so much transformation that goes on within the human psyche and human bodies and seeing it evolve but still maintain its essence and what it's got to give it's been it, it's fascinating and and an honor actually that i can do it yeah. so it is a spiritual thing isn't it yoga it certainly is yeah it's the basis of it um i think we've focused a lot on the uh, postural aspects of yoga and it's it's many many benefits posturally but it's a for, for many people it's an inroad into the further practices of yoga which are spiritually based and it doesn't mean that it's all woo woo but that how are we relating to the outside world how are we relating to ourselves and how are we showing up in in the world how, what is it that is the basis for how we live and how we mm. treat people are we kind you know there are a myriad different books and scriptures that detail all these things and um, it's certainly a path with a lot of depth if people want to pursue it for that reason. Mm. I think yoga and meditation goes together doesn't it? Yeah it certainly does so in fact you could say that it's a natural progression and, and that to be practicing yoga asana which are the postures really lead to uh, quieter state within so that you can sit in meditation and you can notice things that you perhaps wouldn't in your normal daily life that go under the radar. So this link um, doesn't need to be there. It doesn't have to be that you need to do yoga postures to do meditation, but it, it can be a really wonderful tool to move you into a state which gives you that feeling of awareness of being a witness to what's going on. So do the the poses take us out of our mind. So if we're just sitting there meditating as opposed to doing a pose, does it sort of fuse to take, you know, stop our mind thinking? Well, it can do. The poses do. It can do. Um, so postures can give you uh, better alignment. It can therefore influence the way our circulation moves. It can change the way our energy flows within our body. And that makes us feel better. So if you've got a sore back, it's very difficult to sit in meditation and concentrate on what's going on when all you can focus on is the pain in your back. Mm -hmm. Well, that could be a technique and you can use it in that way. However, if you have a posture practice, you're able then to become mindful of what's going on in your body. N won't necessarily turn off your thinking, but mm -hmm. you're more aware of what's going on in your body. And that includes your thoughts. So it's accepting what's present in your experience. And the further you get into a practice, whether it be an hour long practice or a 10 year long relationship with a practice, the further you get into that, the more you can, real, you can recognize or experience that transition from being super busy in the mind and stressed and worried about all these things in your life to slowly they become less loud. They're not so uh, forceful in your mind anymore. Mm, mm. That's interesting. Mm, yeah, so we can develop a 
a kind of detachment, not in a cold way, but mm. in a warmer, more open, accepting way of whatever it is that's going on in our lives. Because invariably we have problems and we experience change and loss and all of those kinds of things. And even happiness can bring stress. So navigating our lives with the basis of a practice gives us a container that we can watch all these things happening in. So it's not a it's it's not just a free for all going out into the world and being hammered by all your experiences. You've got a container for it and you've got a regular practice. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting that you say that happiness comes with stress too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it can do, I suppose. Sometimes people just aren't acclimated to happiness and they're worried oh, once they're happy, true. oh my God, it's going to go away. How long is it going to last? What's the catch? I don't want to be disappointed. You know, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. going to lose my, my happiness. Yeah, so it always comes with a... Uh, yeah. cost mm. that's true that's true mm. it's finding that balance about balance we're all seeking balance yeah I think so mm. so how important is breath and breath work with what you do mm. it's paramount well mm. I always say in my classes nothing that I guide you into is compulsory except your breathing because if you stop that yeah. I'm in a lot of trouble so it's really important to focus in on your breathing because it's constant it's always with us and it, it is one of the most profound ways to change our physiology really quickly more so than posture and it can access the mind state very very fast so the change that happens through yoga practice when you start focusing on the body and introducing a breath centric approach can be that everything starts to calm down because your nervous system isn't on high alert anymore. We're not in fight or flight. So there's this ability physiologically for us to have the power to calm ourselves down quite quickly using breath work. Um, and that could be used integrated into movement and posture, or it might be used as a standalone practice. And it might be used for some people who find it difficult to sleep. Or mm. can, or okay. Can't get back to sleep. Right, so it doesn't need yeah. to be a formal thing. We're breathing all the time. Mm. So it, it, it's developing a relationship with the breath and what we can do with the breath in that moment. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting that you said that about the sleep too. Because that would, that makes sense. It's something so natural, but, but people wouldn't think about it to think okay, I can't sleep, I've got things on my mind, let me just lie here and focus on my breath. It's something so sort of simple, but I'm glad you said that. Mm, it's to, Maybe someone listening can just do that. Well, what, you what know, can they do? What, what how would they do it? Like for, so it's actually sleeping has been something that I've worked on in myself for quite some time and I'm familiar with the 3 a.m. Um, voice in the head. So that's, yeah. you know, the, the time you where... You mean waking up at three? Well, you know, when people wake up at yeah. two or three o'clock in the do. morning and that's when all the worries come and the yeah. magnifying glass comes out and makes them all bigger. So we, we don't have rational brain-centred thoughts at that particular time of the day usually. So we, to, to, in order to use breath in that moment, it can be very, very simple. So... It's, it's just the, the turning of your attention onto the breath can be in itself soothing and it changes the breath. As soon as we start to be aware of it, your breathing will change. And to add to that, even simply just lengthening the exhalation starts to calm your nervous system down. Some people find counting the breaths really helpful that that process of counting perhaps on the exhale from one to ten and then repeating if necessary and noticing mm. how many times you go off the count how many times you end up on your usual thought train of whatever rumination or worry or whatever planning it might be but to constantly come back to the counting and the breath can also be helpful. Yeah. Mm. Mm. 
so can we do a little breath work now like a little one minute breath work yeah that's a great idea so or, or however long you think yes a yeah, sure. little in your yeah, hands we can do that so if, any, if you're driving in the car don't close your eyes but if you're sitting at home and you would like to participate make sure you're comfortable in your seat and you close your eyes if you're able to <coughs> and Thank just you. just settle in to where you are without feeling like you need to be doing anything special or different. And notice how your breathing is, just as it is now. It's our most intimate connection. It is our life force. There is nothing that's more important than your breath. If you don't have your breath, there is nothing else. So just following the, the pathway of your breath in and out through both nostrils to start with. Just noticing the air streaming in through both nostrils, in and out. And whilst you do that, maybe notice if you're clenching tension around your eyes or in your temples, your cheeks, and particularly relax the tongue, your jaw, Loosening all these areas gives more freedom for the breath. And also relax the back of your head where it meets the neck. The skull meets the neck. That junction can hold a lot of tightness. And now slightly deepen the breath so you're lengthening the inhale and lengthening the exhale. And then be aware of your breathing moving into the chest. Be aware of the breath perhaps moving the belly. And just noticing how the breath touches the inside of the body, these pathways. So let your breath be a little longer, a little more shaped than it normally would be more deliberate paying particular attention to it even when thoughts come that's normal you can always return your attention back to the breath if there's things going on outside or there might be noises or sounds it's okay you'll still be breathing and then just slightly lengthen the exhale now so just for the next few rounds make the exhalation a little bit longer maybe a couple of seconds longer than the inhale and what you might notice is as you lengthen the exhale the inhale naturally becomes more free and perhaps bigger and that's fine we're just now concentrating on lengthening the exhale by a couple of counts a couple of seconds The breath is the bridge between the body and the mind. It helps to bring the body and the mind more in harmony. So we feel more centered and at ease. Now let your breathing return back to a more easeful state so you're not having to measure or lengthen. Just let it be easy. And then if you've had your eyes closed, you might like to just tilt the head a little bit forward and open your eyes, bring your head back to center. And just continue breathing easily. Simple. Nice. <coughs> Very nice. All right. So we can do that in the morning and evening. I know a lot of people are into morning routine, evening routine mm. and unwinding with breath and mindfulness. Particularly the lengthening of exhale is good in the evening because it starts to decompress our nervous system. So I could, I would say you could also use that in bed when you're trying to go back to sleep, just to lengthen exhale. And in the morning, when we want to be more energized and awake, you would do the same thing with the inhale. So you would be inhaling more fully <clears throat> um, and perhaps doing it in a 
you could even do it with your eyes open. So it could there's so much that could be tailored to suit the personal situation. Um, yeah. yeah, there's and any time of the day really when someone mm. takes just one conscious breath that just makes us more mindful. If we do that repeatedly through the day, it serves us very well. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And, and we know, you know, when we're stressed or, you know, someone's in hospital and if someone's got some bad news and they're stressed and they're panicking and they're told, breathe, mm. just just breathe, mm. you mm -hmm. know. It's so fundamental. That's the, 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 and also the fight flight response when we are panicking mm. changes our breath. You know what it's like to be upset or panicking and your breath becoming shallow and laboured. Mm. And then, for example, when we cry, there's there's a particular focus usually on inhale. If people are sobbing, and, or if they're yeah, laughing, right. it's often exhale. It's yeah. the ha 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 ha. Oh, right. The, the, the ex exhalation is released more forcefully on a laugh. That's interesting. So our breath it reflects our state of mind all the time. Mm. Mm. So the inhalation and exhalation has its own they have sort of particular theme. effects. Yeah, they do. So you could think of the inhalation as being more energizing, not like the type of energizing you get from caffeine, but the energizing mm -hmm. which where you feel like your circulation is moving, you feel alive, you feel you feel vital. Mm. The exhalation is a calming aspect to the breath. So there's a breath practice where we balance those two. So you're balancing not only the inhale exhale but the pauses in between them so that creates also another effect right in our brain and this is all studied there's this really there's this really real concrete Science, evidence yes. around this stuff so um it does change the way we perceive after we've been doing breath work we feel different so we see the world differently so we interact better with people hmm. So w when we breathe in, we can hold the breath at the top of the breath mm. for a little bit before we exhale. Yep. And then again, before we take a breath in, wait a bit. Yep. Like what, how long? Exactly. Exactly that. So the the Sanskrit word for that is the samavritti, which is the same fluctuation. So it's basically it can be translated as square breathing. Well, there's four mm. aspects to the breath. So there's the inhale and the pause and the exhale and the pause and you can play with the length of all of those aspects of the breath for different effects what i always say is never ever force so if you feel out of breath doing breath work you're not doing something that's helpful mm. so just let it go mm. but if you can say for example do a four count inhale a four count hold and a four oh, count yeah. exhale and a four count hold and work towards that, then you'll find it has a particular calming effect on the brain and on the mind. Mm. Mm. And it doesn't take long, so you wouldn't sit and do it for half an hour. Mm. You'd, you'd maybe do up to 10 rounds maximum of that and then go back to normal breathing, then do it again a few times and then maybe go back to normal breathing. So yeah. it's nothing rigid. Right. Mm. Have you seen Wim Hof? Oh, yes. <laughs> He's that a bit. remarkable man. <laughs> Have you tried those exercises yes, he does? That one was it was it something like holding the breath for a minute or a minute and a bit, a minute and a half, and he said and people say, No, I can't do it, but he says just and you can do it. And I, I actually tried it and I did it. I was so shocked. I, I know like, it's amazing. What? I just held my breath for a minute. I know it's amazing. He's he's a he's a phenomenal teacher and man, he's a force of nature actually. And he the way he instructs is just so straightforward and to the point. There's no choice about it. <laughs> exactly, and and the will that you can do That's it. Right. And that can. spirit in him. Mm, yeah, and I was also surprised when I um, used his technique. I thought, let's see where this goes, and quite surprisingly, it, it you can do amazing things. Mm. Certainly, but his story is amazing, isn't it? it? Is. I mean, what sort of got him into all this was what happened with his wife. That's right. The tragedy. That's right of his wife's, wife's passing and wow. And the power of what he's done with cold. Yeah, yeah. the cold. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. But Sometimes it's, I wonder if that's good though, yeah. all of that cold, that icy cold. Well, yeah, I think for some people, not everybody, I think it depends on your condition. Mm. And the mind is yeah. everything, isn't it? It certainly is. What, what's up here. Yeah, definitely. Gee whiz. Now, I just want to backtrack because you mentioned cat. 
caffeine and I just thought I wonder what your thoughts are on that because mm. you know there's so many different schools of thoughts isn't there yeah caffeine no. is it good is it not is it well what I suppose everyone's different and some people really rely on it and mm. it's a drug and it's yeah, addictive it's a drug for sure and it gives you a false high with energy and however there is always an exception and some people get sleepy drinking coffee i know people like that right. so I, I with anything to do with health i really don't like to say there's one rule there's one way mm -hmm. because it's, it's it's always variable depending on the person so i think that caffeine is highly addictive mm -hmm. and relied upon because people are tired i think people in general are just so flat out exhausted from mm. their lives and just trying to keep going so there's no i'm not trying to shame anybody for drinking yeah. coffee at all it's just hard and some people just like the taste of it it's you know social so do you drink coffee i don't drink coffee no did you ever i did yes i and i always when anyone asked me that question i remember back to my uni days and I think back to when I was drinking uni coffee and wondering why I'm getting heart palpitations. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, yeah. It yeah. does that to some people, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. I'm particularly sensitive to things like that. So, yeah. Well, I, every time you had a coffee, you got that. Heart palpitations. But I think it's also the particular type of coffee that you drink. So If it's strong. Yeah. Or if it's, you know, got other things in it. But mm. I think that, yeah, it, it, I understand oh. some people have trouble, you know, because it's a vice, really, and they mm. want to stop it but can't because they rely on it so much yeah mm. so addictive it is it really is i was only having one a day and i missed one because i just didn't want one but then i had a migraine oh. and i had to have one to get rid of the migraine and i thought now as soon as that happened i said no more because i don't want that to control my life mm. because i didn't want one so why should i have one when i don't want one the coffee was controlling me all it was was one a day i thought how can this be and you can become dependent so dependent it's not like on i had five no but real intense migraine for two days and then after that i haven't had any for i haven't had coffee for months i feel really good oh that's good when you've had an experience like that it's easier to let something go certainly but it, you know it it's it's a tricky topic because i know lots of people are attached to it but it, mm. it's certainly uh, some people think it's a health Thing. Some people think coffee is really healthy mm. and have it with butter in the morning. I yeah. I, What's I, that called? It's called something. Oh. Bullet, well, bullet coffee is or it, something. Yes, that's right. Well, no, you're right. It is. It's something like a bullet, something magic bullet. But yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd like to see if that sustains the test of time. I'd like to see that's how that's true. going after that's 10 true. or 20 years. Yeah. What well, the studies show. Yeah, I, I know it's not as sexy, but having a glass of warm water is probably just as good oh, for your digestion. Exactly. With a bit of lemon. Lemon in it. We were talking about that with Lee and Beatrice. Yeah, absolutely. Last week. Warm we lemon need to water. do that, especially first thing in the morning. Our liver has just come off duty, like hardcore detox duty overnight, and it really helps to cleanse a lot of that debris mm. in the morning, just having lemon water. It can be so helpful. You know what it's like in your mouth in the morning. That's like that through the whole of your system. Lemon water is a cleansing item, so it can it can really reduce some of that build up that's happened overnight. It's fabulous. Build up of all the, what what's in our environment toxins. Well, and it can be just like bacteria that. that's grown overnight, mm. or that um, if we've been stressed the chemistry in our blood changes so mm. different bacteria able to grow that maybe aren't so favorable maybe you've eaten too much too close to going to bed so you've still got some digesting food in there that's been there for 10 or 12 hours you know there's so many processes that go on to try and help our bodies clean themselves up that's just something we can do to assist it interesting what can we do to help um, I've got a few minutes left. Um, help, help our sort of gut microbiome, you know, garlic, ginger, turmeric is always what people talk about. Mm -hmm. But just some things. I mean, uh, Beatrice was even saying having gaps between eating, you know, have some space, don't Definitely. cram the food in. Definitely. You know, the one thing I say to people that talk about gut micro microbiome is cook. Make sure you cook your own food. Oh, because okay. going out yeah uh, has a particular there's a particular energy to it and when you're preparing your own food you mm. know what goes into it 
you know you know you're chopping your vegetables you, you what you're putting into what you're eating and you know what's happening you know what you're putting into your body we don't know what we're putting into our body when we go out there are some good really good places to eat out but mm. not always so i think you need to be really aware of what you're putting in your body i think that is the number one key plus i think it's really great um to eat fruit i think mm. fruit is has been demonized actually and i think fruit is a really excellent way to improve our gut microbiome so i wouldn't be afraid of fruit yeah yes <laughs> i two hands up for that yeah. my gosh i've only just come across it the past two months yeah fruit thank god i'm hearing all this because it's fruit is medicine from the earth it is it's full of antioxidants it's it's full of prana or energy and i think that exactly if especially if you have fruit on an empty stomach it's just cleansing uh, apples they're brilliant even dried fruit dates brilliant like all these bananas don't demonize the poor bananas like <laughs> why are they demonized because it's carbs it's supposedly or something. lots of sugar but is it lots of sugar well, well, well sugar we can digest but, and, and there's handle. all sorts of so many other things in there that, that are so helpful true some people truly have a fructose problem but that's not most of the population like as always i'm saying these things that are kind of general but mm. take it in a way that's going to suit your body even stewed fruit and when it's cold weather is beautiful right so warming up apples doesn't affect it oh it's still got lots of fiber and it's it's there's no there will be a lot of vitamins and minerals still present it's oh it's, because you know how we hear if you heat it up it kills the well, I think if you cook it to within an inch of its life, it yeah, exactly. wouldn't be you as great. Yeah, exactly. Overdo like, it. Yeah, again, there's a balance. Right. Yeah, just a low just, flame, just for five, ten minutes. Yes, yeah. then it's oh, it's, it's so logical, isn't it? some cinnamon. I probably don't add sugar to it. Yeah. And just let it sit there and have it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's one of the most simple mm. things I think we overlook is the fruit. Because <laughs> we do want something warm in winter. Well, now we're in winter, mm. but we want like you said stewed warm mm. apple mm. Mm. warm apple you can even stew dried fruit and have that also so um so okay kind of yeah you can add a bit of water yeah a little bit of water mm. right mm. like people do with dried mushrooms so put a bit of water to yes. sort of yeah, soften it up too. in soups yeah absolutely. do you dry your own things i have got dehydrator. a dehydrator my sister kindly gave me that and um it's it's great actually mm. i've got some um herbal um plants that I dry and use for teas as medicines. So, you know, things like nettle Good. or lemon verbena. Or, oh, you grow it and then yeah, you dry it. I grow it and dry Perfect. it. Perfect. And make it as a tea. Love it's that. the medicinal value of plants that you could grow in your garden, even parsley tea, so simple mm. um, and can be so cleansing. So I people don't need to be complicated about their health. It can be really Good point. straightforward. It doesn't need to be 10 supplements in the morning and you know fandangled things it, the more simple the, the better body knows what to do just keep it simple yeah, yeah. That, that's good advice too and are you also an advocate for not having too much on your plate like not too much variety just keep it simple food yeah food wise <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, i think it's i think that works not well too much i think that really going on and and the the types of combinations of food so you know mixing for example, dairy with fruit. Yeah. You can speak to the Ayurvedic practitioners about that. Definitely, that's that doesn't usually digest well. Why is that? Well, different dairy enzymes and the sugars. are required, and the fruit will generally like there's protein and fat in in dairy, and there's a lot of a lot more sugar in the fruit. So your stomach can't digest both at the same time. Yeah. It has to do one first, then the the whatever else is sitting there waiting to be digested isn't being digested so it's kind of fermenting mm -hmm. and it takes longer so there's there's wow. probably a lot more technical explanation for that but that's basically what's happening all right um a anything else before we wrap it up uh people can find you i have on my website um, i'm doing health consultations with people online on zoom skype or whatsapp or whatever people use Feel comfortable using and i'm teaching yoga at ach in glenelg in and person. christy's beach in person yes. and 
practicing homeopathic medicine, um, which is a, a kind of branch of natural medicine, um, online also. So yes, you can find my phone number and email on my website. And what sort of yoga is it? So um, we've got another 40 minutes. I think um, um, it's- Hot yoga? No, no, definitely not the hot yoga. You don't like that? Not the hot yoga. So I teach a really friendly form of yoga, which is based on the needs of the group. And um, a lot of what I'm teaching at ACH is around falls prevention, maintaining mobility, um, making sure that we can maintain, manage stress with the breath. And there are some chair yoga classes that I'm doing also for people who can't get on the ground. So um, okay, you would generally call it Hatha yoga, which has a t technical meaning, but basically we're using movement and breath and meditation together. Mm. And, and last question, what are your thoughts on hot yoga? I'm just curious because I, I couldn't stand it, but that's just me, but that's just me. Yeah, um, yeah I'm a cold bodied person. I still don't care for it, but it um, was popularized um, under the banner of Bikram and uh, it's taken many other forms since then. I think some people really take to it, but again, mm -hmm. um, and some people will be advocates for it for life, but I also think that it needs to stand the test of time. So let's see where mm -hmm. it goes after 10 or 20 years. And if those people who really love it have continued or not, then I think we can see the results. Generally, people stick with it for six to 12 months and then venture mm. off into something else. Oh, yeah. you've noticed that? Yeah, generally. Yeah, no. I, I just feel like it was too stressful on the body. I don't know if this room was too hot. It, it was unbearably hot. I think... Um, like, really bad. It's not... I wouldn't advise it. And I It think, didn't feel good. And I think... Um, <clears throat> I, particularly, I think, with Bikram, I might be speaking out of turn, but I know that there are 16 different postures practiced twice. So there's a, se a very specific sequence and they go through that sequence twice. Um, and I think when we do that kind of practice in yoga, we develop habit body and we don't move in all the other myriad ways we can explore within our bodies. So um, I think that as long as there's some other variety, that, that's all I'd advise if someone wanted to do that kind of practice, introduce other movement and mm get some fresh air while you're exercising yeah too. <laughs> that's true that's true and, and i'm not saying it's not good for no. anyone out there who might teach it or whatever because i know people that absolutely love it absolutely they love it but it just wasn't for me i, I don't like the heat anyway i don't like sort of 40 degree temperatures you know some people love summer Definitely. and being really really hot so i i don't so and could I, it be just my body type and i think m many there are people out there who it does suit who really feel and get so much benefit from the detoxification process during the sweat. That's true. Yeah. And so it's it's as everything, there's a place mm -hmm. for all of it. That's true. And 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 certain bodies adapt that way, particularly in the heat. And and I say go for it. Yeah. Know, but that's right. Yeah, there are many people who it doesn't suit mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Abby, for joining. Thanks, Bianca. So Adelaide and Natural Health with Abby. Yeah, Abby thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, Bianca. Yes, you're welcome. Lisa.